So dudes, I'm G and this is my gaming experience. So in this video, I'm going to answer the question, is Siege worth playing in 2024? And the answer is, uh, it's complicated. There's one thing that I haven't talked about in all of my past content concerning Rainbow Six Siege, and that is the Defender AI playlist. Now I know what you're thinking, gee, what the heck does this have to do with anything? You're capping, this is cap. You're just looking for something to yap about. True, I am just looking for something to yap about, but if you've been watching any of my recent content, you'll know, I don't think it's in a particularly healthy state. So yeah, guys, all that being considered, it's perfectly normal to feel like pulling your hair out with the game. I've been there too. Which is why this video is sponsored by Keeps. Hair loss can manifest itself either in Rainbow Six Siege or in the form of typical male pattern baldness. To help you with Rainbow Six Siege or naturally induced male pattern baldness, Keeps is here with a subscription-based service that will give you a tailor-made clinical treatment plan if you would like one. It really is all about you and making it as easy as possible with affordable treatment plans that are typically half the cost of traditional pharmacy prices. It can all be arranged from the comfort of your computer desk. You don't have to drive into town. You don't have to book an appointment and go through all that rigmarole. Convenience is key. That's what Keeps is all about. And if you're not even really worried about male pattern baldness, Keeps also has products that can help you take care of the hair you already have on your head with volumizing shampoos and conditioners, stuff like that. So if all that sounds good to you, remember hair loss stops with Keeps. For a special offer, go to keeps.com slash Gregor or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Gregor. That doesn't mean the game is unplayable. It's not literally unplayable. You can download it. You can boot it up. You can play it. It's just... Are you going to like it? I, I don't know. Uh, the cheating situation is really bad. And I'm hoping that something is big around the corner here. But hopefully one day you won't have to play with the cheaters. One day you can play with robots. <laughs> and that's kind of the, the thesis of the video. So when I'm talking about what I predict is coming to the game in the future, the Defender AI playlist has sparked my interest. And the reason for that has more to do with where they plan on taking the AI moving forward. I'll be talking about content updates, community feedback, the competitive scene, and the game's cost as well. So as it stands, while I'm making this video, the game hasn't had a lot of news specifically in 2024, duh. It's towards the tail end of year eight. Year nine is right around the corner. When it's appropriate, I'll talk about year nine. Year eight, after a lot of carrying on and negative feedback surrounding Tuberau, sorry, Brazil, uh, for my pronunciation. Uh, Tuberau, more specifically how freaking powerful he was, he finally got a much needed nerf. The interaction to bandit trick with the batteries on top of the wall was made to be a lot more skill based and he lost one of his ice canisters, which this was a great change in my opinion. I do not believe 48 seconds of guaranteed wall denial is good game design, at least in Rainbow Six. Also, Maverick cuts through the icy wall just as quickly as he does other walls now, which is also good, because previously it made him not a good counter. He should be a good counter, because as it stands, Tuberau didn't really have any counters. There was also some weird changes that I was, uh, I was a little bit lost on, uh, particularly in regards to guns. Some people claim that these changes had a negligible effect, but they still seem to indicate some priorities from Ubisoft that I find a bit odd. The G36 was recently nerfed in terms of its recoil, and the SMG-11 had an itty bitty tiny little damage nerf that you probably didn't notice. But it was communicated in a rough way and it got a lot of people upset anyway. Now personally, I've never complained about any of these weapons, even if they tricked uh, some kind of tick on the Excel spreadsheet Ubisoft uses. I still think that some guns should be fun. Uh, they should even be allowed, uh, dare I say, they should be allowed to be somewhat overtuned sometimes. A little too much spice didn't hurt anyone, except the British. You don't have to get into that. So those changes highlighted an ongoing philosophy Ubisoft uses when it comes to weapon balancing that just seems a bit odd to me because I don't think the approach of constantly nerfing every single commonly used weapon in the game is very sustainable. Now, I don't know what is happening in year nine and the new roadmap could unveil who knows what, anything can happen. But in terms of year nine announcements, I would like a very concrete, easily understandable mission statement on what Ubisoft wants out of Rainbow Six Siege gunplay. Because if memory serves me correctly, I would imagine they're still not a fan of how it is now. 
because anytime there is an element of something in the gunplay that is perceived as easy, it gets tuned. Which is a self-defeating mindset for balancing, in my opinion, because your game has one-shot headshot. Some people can shoot, some people can't. Uh, the people who can shoot will always, always have the advantage in Rainbow Six because of one-shot headshot. So that's my first point about balancing. If you want to play the game, just know that it's not designed with the intention of being a gunner-focused game, even though many of the rounds play out this way now. Now, all things considered, Ubisoft seems to be in this, you know, never-ending battle with a 16-year-old with the anime profile picture running around the office and quick-peeking everything. So if you want to get into Rainbow Six Siege for the gunplay, I would advise caution. Because the gunplay for your favorite gun could change. If you want to get into Rainbow Six, I would advise you to start with the parts of the game that don't change quite as much, contrary to popular opinion, and that's the maps. Maps get reworked, but... Once the maps are here, they tend to stick around and stay that way. Such is true for Oregon. We've had the Oregon rework in the game since 2019. And it's essentially become the mirage of Rainbow Six if you played Counter-Strike. So in terms of map knowledge, uh, I would advise watching streamers, taking notes of default reinforcements, rotation holes, things like that. Just so you know you're not going out completely on a limb. And learn where the main holes go for different sites and the common spawn peaks. Once you get around those, you'll be on your way to Siege Mastery in no time. Also, learn operator counters. Think outside the box a little bit. Don't be afraid to bring the less picked operators every once in a while. Because sometimes the enemy isn't going to be prepared for it, and you can get some free unexpected picks. You want to take advantage of the sandbox as much as possible, and you'll be rewarded for it. So that's the stuff that changes rapidly, and the stuff that doesn't change quite as rapidly. What else I think is really interesting is the Defender AI playlist, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And the reason for this is because Ubisoft is floating around some pretty involved and interesting tech for this stuff. And I don't think enough people are either aware or talk that much about it. So I'm going to read an article discussing it. Rainbow Six Siege has a massive player base with 85 million players, many of whom have been playing the game since its 2015 launch. However, the Rainbow Six Siege team noticed new players had a difficult time onboarding as they found the steep learning curve and experienced player base a tough learning environment. These players tend to spend most of their time eliminated from gameplay, unable to learn or enjoy the mechanics of the game. How many of you guys can relate? The Rainbow Six Siege team wants to change by developing dual AI frameworks, which use both machine learning and traditional AI to produce bots that behave more like actual players. So this is fascinating to me because we're not just making AI that waddles around like a bot. Two seconds. Right? When you say you play like a bot, it may have a different connotation. We're simulating human gaming behavior, which is... There's lots of layers there, and a lot of people find that terrifying. I won't approach that territory, but it's cool because think of whether or not you could train against, let's say, a ghost of yourself. You'd probably naturally get better over time, right? Like, what if you could put in a 1v1 kind of environment, you could work on the weak parts of your gunplay with a ghost of you. That's kind of humbling, right? Like, if you fried you on a spawn peak and you're like, that dude sucks, and then it's you, oh, wh wait, I suck. So I don't know if anybody's played the Defender AI playlist yet, but it's really shocking what they're doing here. A friend of mine, he got Impact ran out on from Garage Door to peek him on the roof of Clubhouse. Like, that may seem like a basic play to somebody with 3,000 hours in the game, but the amount of calculations for a robot to arrive at that point is pretty drastic. It has to throw the impact at the right spot that lets it walk for the hole. It has to have the quickness and reactivity to sprint and run forward without catching on the terrain or something. And it has to get its gun up and shoot. And it has to observe that information of coming around the corner, looking, seeing, and then shooting. What do you think of AI when you think of FPS games, right? You just think of cover, shoot, cover, shoot, cover, shoot, right? It's usually not that much different from one to the next. That's why in older games, we made so many different kinds of enemies that weren't just cover shoot guys, right? Mass Effect kind of stood out that way, right? All the different enemies had like kind of a different personality because it helps, you know, it makes the environment feel more believable. So let me keep going. To create the new system of bots, the Rainbow Six Siege team in tandem with researchers and AI innovators decided to build parallel frameworks. One that uses a more traditional AI framework and another that uses machine learning. The long-term goal is for the new bot feature to exclusively use machine learning AI. 
but the traditional AI method was needed to get the feature released quickly and without game disruption. The team used the existing AI architecture in Rainbow Six Siege, but turbocharged it with match data from the game, essentially teaching the AI to use the data to behave like a player, but without reducing code complexity. One of the ways we're doing this for all cases where a player has thrown a grenade, we look at all the data around the world state when it was thrown. Then we produce a module within machine learning to predict in a given situation if it's a good time to throw a grenade. So this is really fascinating stuff if you're a math geek, because what it's essentially doing here is using computations to find all the situations in which a grenade was thrown, comparing and contrasting all of that against all the other situations in which a grenade was not thrown, and then it creates parameters under which the robot says, if input A, output, throw a grenade. If input B, don't throw a grenade. So this will teach you how to think reactively instead of proactively with this game. It'll train instinctual play, which I think is really, really cool. Because it means you can play an authentic or at least near authentic game of Siege without relying on nine other people. And guess who puts, guess who that puts out of business? Dun da da da, cheaters, right? So if you added a difficulty slider, you could ramp it up to Pro League, right, for instance and see how well coordinated this kind of execute is versus another kind of execute. We're getting into like predicting the decision making of people. It's it's pretty gnarly. Like I can theoretically test a strategy and put it into a feedback environment. I can run experiments with observable useful data collection. If I make a site setup that works against all right, let's say like gold ranked level, right? That might work to a point, but if I ramp it up to Pro League, I can run that setup again and again and again, and I can isolate the weaknesses. I can find patterns and I can isolate the weaknesses of where that strategy is. I can see it. I can treat the game like an engineer would. That's really, really cool. That's like, that's what Rainbow Six is all about. This kind of caught my eye, this news, when I heard the word AI, but I didn't really know what they were trying to do with it. I wanted to look more into it. And now that I have, I can tell you that I think this is pretty slept on right now. Most people aren't talking about it because they're kind of not plugged into that tech world. But anybody who follows this stuff knows why I'm so excited about this. I think this is a massive game changer. And it's going to impact the way we design multiplayer games for one. But it's also going to give people avenues to make really, really cool and interesting creative single player experiences as well. Now, as far as I know, this stuff is just kind of being roughly tested in the Defender AI playlist we have in the game right now. But if I'm not an idiot, I think it'd be reasonable to assume this will be expanded upon. So where do most people stand with the game right now? Well, despite my yapping here on YouTube and the frustration about the cheating stuff, the average player who boots up Quick Match kind of Fs around for a bit and gets off, they don't seem to really notice the cheater thing. The ranked sweats are still an important demographic, and I don't think you can just lose them. But until year nine, I just... I have my fingers crossed Ubisoft has something big to tackle the cheating thing. I think the game can at least last until the spring. So this year is going to be pivotal. This year is going to be really important. The feedback, as far as I can tell, is still pretty positive. If you look on Steam and Google reviews, the game is getting great feedback. As far as I can tell, console is doing pretty good. Console Siege is killing it. Thanks, Jinxie. What about the competitive scene? You guys know I've covered the competitive scene from time to time. So I'm not 100% sure what's going on here. Because I think that while Ubisoft won't cut the cord on it completely, I wouldn't be surprised if the format got downsized again this year. That's just my prediction because the actual amount of matches and amount of teams that compete in the big tournaments got downscaled with Blast. So while everybody likes to keep moaning that the game is only balanced for Pro League, from what I can tell, Ubisoft actually seems like they kind of want to distance themselves a little bit more from the PL stuff. Not because they don't like PL or they don't want to support it, but because they're concerned about the market viability with the version of the game they're trying to sell. Which, if you remember the cutscene they dropped for Year 8, it was a lot more gritty, involved, classic Tom Clancy kind of storytelling. They want this game to be seen as a tactical shooter. And it can be a competitively viable, competitively sound multiplayer environment too. I'm not going to be angry, in other words, if Ubisoft makes a good faith attempt to make the tactical game that they want. It's just going to take time like everything else in the industry. I can't really get up here and rage bait all the time because it's just mentally exhausting for me. I know that the games industry has a ton of bull shisa going around. Corporate this, corporate that. I feel like 10, 15 years ago, you were allowed to be critical of the corporate environment of gaming but not to the point of just like every single thing is going to be bad 
and that is just the default stance, everything sucks. Right now, it really feels like the default stance is just everything sucks. And even if I am being naive, it's, like I said, mentally exhausting to just get in, clock into this job, and then just pontificate on the woes of late-stage gamerism. So I'm just not going to do that. Halo Infinite being a great example, I've heard everything possible from the same kinds of people about this game. I've heard it's saved the license and it's killed the license in the same breath. I could be romanticizing it or I wasn't aware, but when I was like 15, I feel like these conversations were a little bit more mature. I feel like over the years they've gotten less mature. Everything seems to be about how many people you can please with the algorithm bait. So I'm not going to get up here and say that Rainbow Six Siege is going to get to like 100k on Steam. I'm not going to say that. But that golden era of 2018 Siege is long gone, and I think we're in for a pretty, pretty big culture change here. I know Siege could bring back the console league, because Jinxie is bringing so many people to the game on console. Honestly, I don't think that would be a bad idea. Get some local Xbox leagues going, invest in the product, invest in the grassroots scene. We can probably get some interesting stuff going on there, but... That's a bit of a long shot. There might be reasons that they're not doing that that I'm overlooking. In terms of getting into the game, quite literally, it's $20 for the base model, which if I'm being 100% honest, I would not suggest uh, anybody to spend more than $40 max. If you have deep pockets, I guess go for it. But most people aren't going to be hyper sweats like me. They're not going to, you know, try to really, really get involved in the operator picks. They're going to play when they get off work uh, with the guys, the fellas. They're going to play a couple games and they're going to call it a night. They can play the same three to four operators all the time and they'll be okay. They'll, they'll be happy with that. It's a multiplayer only game. I know some people out there will spend $70 on Call of Duty every year and only play the multiplayer. It's me. I'm some people. It's gaming in 2024, right? Like if you can afford it, go for it. I think $20 for what is on offer and what will be on offer moving forward is a very reasonable price for what the game has. If you stay away from ranked, maybe you can stay away from the cheaters, or at least I hope you can. Personally, I think the game could be in a better state, but there isn't a single FPS game in the world like Rainbow Six Siege. And just despite its haters, the weirdos who go around using phrases like esports slop unironically, I am that petty. I want this game to do well to spite these people. I want the game to do well to prove that a game like this can have legitimacy, can be taken seriously. It deserves to be taken seriously. Games that demand you think critically are important. They're what keep the industry rejuvenated, interesting, and they force developers to try new things. My recommendation personally, avoid ranked like the plague. I can't stand it anymore. I play standard and I don't have as many cheaters most of the time. I'd like to get back into the rank grind. I just can't, I just can't do it right now. Get a bunch of your friends together, see if you can get a 10 man going, put the game on a competitive rule set, lawn form match settings. I guarantee you the back to back, like our to an hour and a half long time investment makes it feel so much more rewarding when you win. I like this game. I think it's still got life in it. I'm going to wait until year nine. We'll, we'll do the Bob Sags, you know, one more for the road. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I can't say I didn't support it. I can't say I didn't try. Is that naive? Probably. I don't care. I'm allowed to have one point of cognitive dissonance. You know, I, that's okay. I'm allowed that. For me, it's Rainbow Six. Long story short, do I think the game is going to last another 10 years? I have no idea. Could probably last another year or two. Good enough. So $20 for that? Um, I would say so. I would just give it a whirl and see what you think. Get a five stack together in standard. Strat it up. See what happens. And don't worry too much about dying a lot. Because you learn that way. So thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments if you're still invested in the game. I know a lot of people... You know, myself included, have kind of harped on how bad things are. But if you're having a good time, let me know. I'd like to see some positivity. I'll catch you all later. Thanks so much. Deuces.